Hey guys, Ryan Wright. Uh, and Jerry. There you go, buddy. <laughs> that way to instill some confidence here. We're gonna be doing an honest trailer or a thon. We're doing uh, the rest of phase one. We posted our reviews Ooh. for Iron Man and the Incredible Hulk. I'm gonna get comfortable. Yeah, and uh, then we'll do phase two for another video. So after we watch the video, we'll do a little mini review based off what we heard in the video. Whether or not we agree or disagree. Oh, stuff yeah. like that. Oh, it's, gonna, it's time to challenge screen junkies to their opinions. Well, you know, I mean, these are always a little nitpicky. <laughs> do I rent a place? From the poor man's Joss Whedon, comes the forgettable follow-up to Iron Man. That's essentially just killing time until the Avengers. Iron Man 2. The completely disappointing sequel you fooled yourself into liking simply because it had Iron Man in it. Suit up for a feature-length version of the Nick Fury bonus scene from the end of the first Iron Man, which will still be unresolved by the end of this movie. Tony Stark not, not recommended? We've witnessed Tony Stark battle global terrorism and his inner demons. Now, prepare to see him take on his biggest challenges yet. Tedious government committees. Can you please read page 57, paragraph 4? You're requesting that I read specific selections from my reports in? Yes, sir. Corporate maneuvering. It was an illegal seizure of trademark property. Low batteries. Another call has been depleted. Alcoholism? And some guy with a bird. I want my bird. Is this a bird back in Russia? A sequel so inferior, it will replace an awesome origin story with countless subplots you won't remember as soon as you walk out of the theater. A story that ditches technology grounded in reality for laughably unrealistic magic holograms. Moose Hunter. Trees. Parking lots. Exits. Entrances. And substitutes Jeff Bridges with Gary Shandling? Do you or do you not possess a specialized weapon? Witness a superhero movie with just enough Iron Man action to fill a three minute trailer, but not a feature length film. Trust us, we counted. Instead, sit back and prepare to watch Iron Man, attend corporate events, eat donuts, DJ birthday parties, and pee his pants. Experience the epic face-off between Iron Man and one of Marvel's least known villains, Whiplash, who's harnessed the most dangerous modern technology ever, only to waste it on a whip. A foe with no known superpowers, who somehow survives being crushed by a car. Not once, not twice, but four times. To defeat this madman, Iron Man's bringing in backup, and they are all just as boring as the rest of the movie. Ouch. Pepper Potts, an inconsistent nag who's totally cool with her boyfriend being Iron Man, but freaks out when he drives a car. I don't know about this. This cannot happen. Black Widow, a sexy spy shoehorned into the movie just to establish her boobs for the Avengers, and Lieutenant Colonel James Rhodes. Nope, no, no, not that one. Yeah, that's the one. Who has the skills to perfectly fit in and pilot an Iron Man suit without any previous experience. Wait, didn't Tony need like half a movie to figure out how to work that thing? A new chapter so thin, the key to the entire plot is resolved by a 40-year-old Easter egg from Tony's dad. Tony, I built this for you. Whoa! One day you'll figure this out. Who decades Batman. earlier somehow Watch. knew his grown son would keep his old diorama. Put it in an impossible to predict holographic computer display that can magnify impossible amounts of detail and reveal the chemical makeup of an impossible to create element. Unfortunately, it is impossible to synthesize. Which Tony immediately synthesizes in order to wrap up all his <laughs> You have created a new element. Ugh, someone got paid to write this? Starry. Rob Stark, Mrs. Uh, Coldplay, Better Terrence Howard, some guy in a Mickey Rourke mask. Oh, that guy from, um, uh, oh, he was hey, in that one movie. A Sam guy Rock in a Rock Gary Shandling mask, Vince Vaughn's BFF, Don Draper, Sam Elliott? No, uh, uh, man, it's bugging me. And Hawkeye with Bubes, Iron Man 2. Sam Rockwell, it's Sam Rockwell. That's the guy. I loved him in Galaxy Quest. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe. Okay. I still like Iron Man too. 
Yeah, like I'll admit, the, when we saw Iron Man 2, I did not like it the, when we first watched it. But I've been watching uh, all the movies in release date order again. Seeing it after watching The Avengers, it's actually better because you, the, it doesn't feel as much of Avengers shoehorn because the world makes more sense now. Okay. So it doesn't feel like you already feel a part of this world. You already feel like uh, Scarlett Johansson's a part of this world and Nick Fury is. That makes sense. So it doesn't feel like, oh, they're just trying to promote the Avengers. Yeah, I mean, a lot of this is just nitpicky stuff. Like, yeah, Don Cheadle wouldn't have been able to figure out the suit that fast, but... But do we really need another 40 minutes of suit figuring out? You know, it's yeah. like, it's that stuff I don't mind losing, really. I'm still not appreciative of how sci-fi technologically, like... Advanced. Just, just, yeah, like, beyond all the... Crazy, I, like it's it's, it's, it a, it's it's a little too insane. Like they I have know. a good point about like Tony's dad creating this little Easter egg, and then Tony just goes like fucking insane with it, and is able to conjure up an element. Like it is like a little bit ridiculous to me. Yeah, I mean, I don't I don't mind the holograms really because like you know from the beginning it's all been about like hey this dude can basically make any technology mm -hmm. that's crazier than any other technology, and we're so used to all those holograms that I don't mind it as an aesthetic choice. Like of course it's unrealistic all the Stark technology is, so like that doesn't really bug me. It, it's a little convenient that it's on this diorama, but that's a different plot point, you know. As far as like the overall picture though, I don't agree that it's a boring film. Like no, I think it's I fun. I personally like the film a lot more now that I've seen it again. We got enough ass kicking in the first one. Like, yeah, let's let's see the aftermath of all this. Let's see what happens. He's get, like, he's got to go to court. You know, he's got to go these places. Yeah, I like seeing- His alcoholism. I like seeing those internal struggles that he goes through with this. Yeah. Like, you know- and, I, and it makes the action more of a treat that way. Yeah, like the action's the action is maybe not like necessarily cooler in this in this one, but the Iron Man movies have always been about Tony Stark at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. If you think about the first Iron Man, there's okay, let's count the action sequences. When he breaks out of the cave, he goes to was it Afghanistan or Iraq when he saves the day? I forgot. Airplane sequence, Tony versus Tony has to fight Obadiah. That's four scenes out of like Don't count this if you don't know them no, because people yeah. are going to school if you. If I'm missing one, I'm sorry, but <laughs> There's um, there's probably only like 20 to 30 minutes of actual Iron Man action in that one. Mm -hmm. The rest is Tony Stark. So Tony Stark is Iron Man. Like that's who we come to see. And I think that's what makes him really interesting to watch. I like Sam Rockwell a lot in the movie. I like Mickey Rourke a lot. Yeah, I like the supporting cast in this movie. Yeah, I thought they were great. So I don't really have a lot of problems. With like all these problems are what I had when I first saw it. But I actually understand them more, so they don't bother me as much. Yeah, it's like I like the side characters and, and all that stuff. You know, in this franchise especially, it's easy to get away with not having lots of action because people just like watching Robert Downey Jr. be Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, and I don't mind the stuff where he's falling apart. Like, I like that stuff. That makes it more interesting to me. Like, I mean, like, I made more sense to me. First off, with the nitpicky stuff about him getting in a race car, that is more dangerous because the Iron Man suit fucking protects you, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the race car suit, he could fly out of it and just break his neck and shit. And Whiplash, you know, putting the power into whips, he says in the movie that he just wanted to make God bleed. So he didn't intend to kill him. He just wanted to, I mean, he could have accidentally killed him all the shit he did. His, his vendetta is with Iron Man himself. It's not like necessarily about world domination. The whole point was for him to show that Iron Man's not God, not by killing him, but he's like, you know, if you make God bleed. Hey, he could kill him. I mean, I think it's just because they've got that whole vendetta back from, mm -hmm. from way back when, you know? And I like the bird it's stuff. It's very personal. I do too. Bird stuff was funny. It's fun, you know. All right, moving on to Thor. Let's do this. Boy, howdy. Take the Thor out of his face. Here we go. Another. Yeah, it's my favorite. Prepare for a film that only exists so non-nerds will recognize the blonde guy in the Avengers, Thor. You've seen great superhero films. You've seen terrible superhero films. Now, prepare for a superhero film that's just kind of, eh. I mean, I guess they did the best they could adapting a comic book about a bratty space god. You are an old man and a fool! Journey to Asgard, the land of Viking myth, where everyone gets a pointy hat, the gods live inside a CGI pipe organ, and the only <laughs> way in or out is through the Rainbow Road level from Mario Kart. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I didn't think of that. relatable Marvel hero since Doctor Strange. He's an idiot demigod prince with a magical hammer that really needs to buy a vowel. You don't need a... Meow meow. Meow meow. Meow meow? 
What's Meow Meow? <laughs> but Thor isn't the only god in town. Meet Loki, Thor's evil stepbrother, who will stop at nothing to betray his adopted father with the help of his real father. I will conceal you, and you can slay him where he lies. In order to betray his real father, your death came with the son of Odin. To impress his adopted father? I could have done it, father, for you! Uh, that makes even less sense than his plan from the Avengers. Not a great plan. Meet uh -huh. Odin. Thor and Loki's dad, who pretty much guarantees that one of his kids will grow up to resent the other. Only one of you can ascend to the throne, but both of you were born to be kings. Oh, and all these rejects from Lord of the Rings, Ouch. Game of Thrones, and Single Warrior Princess. Said rejects. Struggle with the former god of thunder as he's stripped of his powers and banished to these two square blocks in the New Mexico desert. There, he'll acclimate to our strange earth customs, like ordering in restaurants, Another. <coughs> healthcare, You're no match for the monkey! Traffic safety, what? and horse purchasing. I need a horse! We don't have horses, just dogs. And give me one of those large enough to ride. Watch as Thor turns to Jane Foster for help, a brilliant astrophysicist with supermodel good looks that just happens to be single and who immediately falls in love with Thor for no good reason. Make yeah. Make six yeah. reasons. Abs. So ride yeah. along with Thor yeah. as he loses, then regains his magic powers, hooks up with Jane, saves two different realms from destruction, and learns the virtues of patience and humility all over the course of a long weekend. Seriously, this whole movie takes place over two and a half days. Starring Thunder from Down Under, Pokemon, the Godfather, Idris Elbo, Lord Zed from Power Rangers, <laughs> and, and Portmandia, Thor's obligatory movie. So, Loki dies at the end and comes back to life by the end of the credits? That's gotta be some kind of record. Hey, screen junkies! Um, okay, okay. Now, okay, I know Honest Trailers, they're supposed to make fun of the movie. Yeah. They're supposed to sort of bag on it, but you know when they're like kind of being real about it. And, and you know when they're just making fun. I don't think they necessarily put the movie down that much, actually. It made fun of it, but Thor is not a boring movie at all. It's funny, too. Well, Thor's a lot of things. It's like, you know, part of it is this kind of fantasy movie, and then part of it is this fish out of water story. fish out of water story. story, yeah. And I enjoyed both of those, you know? And I, I'm glad, this is part of what I like about Marvel, is that it's not just a superhero movie, it's also... A fantasy movie. Because they said like, oh, Thor is just okay. But Thor is one of the ones that actually impressed me the most. Because... It's a harder one to sell people on. Because it, it's, you know, it's not of this world, you know, it's... Or at least not entirely of this world. They had to translate Asgard to screen, which is hard. To try to translate Asgard to screen and then have it cut to a story on Earth mm -hmm. where it's a fish out of water tale. We've seen movies before where like, a knight is transported to the present. Or, it is Leopold. Yeah, <laughs> people do stories like that and, or like someone's time traveled into the past and, mm -hmm. and now they're stuck there. When you hear like Asgard, then Earth, and to not make that a goofy comedy, yeah. it's kind of hard. And they made both worlds work. Well, yeah, they had enough comedy and enough action. I liked all those choices, you know, having Thor be the god of thunder, but then he gets to Earth and he has to like learn how to actually yeah. be worthy. You know, I was like, yeah, I like all this stuff. Like, make him work for it before we get the yeah. team together, you know? I've seen uh, Thor at least four times now. Every single time I'm like, why in the world does Natalie Portman like Thor so much? Because Makes more she sense. Has to. But why is Thor in love with her? Like, it, every time I watch it, I'm like, there's no content in here that makes me go, these guys really love each other, you know? Yeah, I mean, I'm not in love with that character in any way. I mean, I'll- Which sucks because it's Natalie Portman, you know? Yeah, and I mean, I like Natalie Portman. I could take her or leave her sort of in Thor. Like, I really liked her in like Black Swan. Like in this movie, I'm not really huge on She's not. Fine. She's not I, bad, she's just not one of the more interesting characters. Yeah, it's like, I mean, I'm gonna take a lot of flack for this, but I, I much more enjoy Kat Dennings than Natalie Portman in this movie because at least she's, you know, humorous and colorful. True. You well, know, Natalie Portman has some good comedic lines in the movie. Yeah, she does, but she sort of has to play, she has to wear all these hats of like, super smart exposition mover, beautiful love interest, 
you know, reason yeah. for Thor to change, you know. She doesn't feel as much like a character as, as much as she does a device a to device me. to move the yeah. plot. Yeah. You know, we saw the Iron Man 2 one, which was making fun of how they shoehorn stuff into the movie of the Avengers. But I love what they did with S.H.I.E.L.D. in uh, Thor. Like, it felt authentic, a part of the world. It didn't feel like, oh, God. More Avengers promotion. Well, yeah. and this was also when it was getting more rapid, too, because yeah. Thor and Captain America were pretty close, and in this movie, it's not as in your face as in Iron Man 2, because in Iron Man 2, it's like, there are whole scenes dedicated to, like, kicking it with Nick Fury and, like, Natasha Romanoff as a character, and then in this, like, you have a couple moments with Hawkeye, don't you? But, like... Yeah, like a moment. And when they implemented S.H.I.E.L.D., they kind of viewed them at first as possible enemy. Yeah, 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 it's and like, what is this outside? Yeah, then, you, then they link it. Yeah, it was. I, I think it's really good, so yeah. Two more to go. Captain America, the first Avenger. Oh, and then the Avengers. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I was like, what are we no, going no, to? It's, it's all good, my brother. Let's do this. Captain America! <laughs> Time to imagine all honest trailer fans <laughs> are. Ah! From the studio, dumb enough to sell their Marvel franchise rights to Disney, comes yet another oh. movie that only exists to set up the Avengers. Captain America, the first Avenger. Stand tall for a superhero movie with an important message. It's what's on the inside that counts, <laughs> except for when it comes to fighting. Or being respected. Look at that. He's making me cry. Or getting laid. Women aren't exactly lying enough to dance with the guy they might step on. Meet Johnny Storm, the Human Torch. Wait, no, that's wrong movie. Meet Steve Rogers, a grown man's head CGI'd onto a little boy's body. He's a skinny kid from Brooklyn who dresses like it's the 1940s. So basically a modern day kid from Brooklyn. Watch as he becomes a superhero in the most American way possible. Steroids. How do you feel? I Abs. He'll juice up to become Captain America, a soldier with the powers of being a little bit stronger than a regular strong guy, ultimate frisbee, <laughs> and, uh, super sobriety? I can't get drunk. Forget huh? Tony Stark's ridiculous 3D holograms and return to an analog world full of lever pulling. I actually like all that stuff. I do too. The production value is great. Switch flipping. Button pressing. I mean, of course. <laughs> ah, just making Dial fun. turning. Yeah. And people calling out percentages with absolutely no context. That's 10%. 70%. That's 50%. 20%. That's 40%. 60. 30. 60. 80. 40. 90. That's 100%. Ride along with Captain America as he faces off against the evil Red Skull, who along with everyone else in sci-fi and fantasy is played by Hugo Weaver. <laughs> Cheer as the captain defeats his legendary arch nemesis in a brisk two-minute montage. All to leave more time for foreshadowing the Avengers. <laughs> Introducing the plot device from the Avengers. Unnecessarily freezing himself so he can be in the Avengers. And an after credit scene that is literally a trailer for the Avengers. Starring the 90-year-old virgin, Tommy Lee Groans, One-Face, Two-Face, Red-Face, U-Face, German Capote, <laughs> Dr. Strangelove, The Winter Spoiler, Agent Love Interest, and Robert Downey Sr., Captain America, The First Avengers Trailer. Raiders of the Lost Ark did it better. Just saying. Hey, Scream Junkies, can't... Okay. Um... I know this movie is where we like disagree on. Yeah, I, I personally am not the biggest fan of this film. I like this one a lot. I always go back and forth on like what my favorite of the phase one movies are, but I really like this one a lot. It might be, it's one of my top of the- Yeah, it's definitely not for me. <laughs> what I admire about it, I really admire about it. Mm. The production value I think is really cool. Yeah, I mean, I love that the, they put this movie mostly I, in, in I, you know, I like the sci-fi in the 40s. I thought that was pretty cool yeah. with its like technology that's not updated yet. As far as really defining Captain America and who he is, it really isn't that definitive other than like he's a good guy with like super strength and a cool shield. I think it does, you know, sort of establish who he is at heart, who he is, like, the spirit of who this guy is and what he represents, you know? It does, but my biggest issue with the film is, honestly, I felt like it could have used another half hour to an hour. 
and I would really? have been okay with that. Of what? I actually liked it up until they started montaging Captain America kicking ass because I felt that all would have been interesting to see how they play out because they're like, hey, it's Cap. Captain America's finally got respect. Okay, he assembles a team. It's like with interesting characters. So you got Bucky and then Bucky dies, but I don't really care because we didn't really get to know Bucky that well. There's other teammates who we're gonna forget about because Cap got frozen and now we're like, oh, we're just gonna forget about those guys. And I feel yeah, like- They're still cool in that movie. Like, I feel like it could have been like an interesting like mission tale of those guys as well. Like a half hour of that would have been cool. At least seeing one full mission play out. I think they do a fine job because they have to establish him as a regular soldier first and then have him take on the super villain. And, you know, because it's a war movie, but with superhero trappings, so it's like, I don't think we can spend all that time watching him defeat just regular soldiers. No, know? I'm talking about when they're working as a team, they montage the whole team stuff. And I felt like there could have been some great, like, intense moments and some cool teamwork to also establish the other characters a little bit more. Know, like, because they set it up as, all right, we got these cool new personalities, but you don't really get to see what their special traits are, or you don't walk away remembering what they are. No, I thought we did, but... Really? What do they do? What do the other teammates do? The other teammates do? I don't know. They they all work together. <laughs> what are they? What are they They're all regular guys, but like... Maybe. I felt like it started rushing at that point, and it started losing my interest, and I don't like the villain stuff that much. I think that's... Oh, I like the villain stuff a lot. Yeah, I, mean, I get bored a lot. You probably remember a lot stuff. more of the fine details because you watched it like just yesterday. I like all the stuff with uh, the Red Skull and, and Toby Jones and all that, like... I was down. I get really bored whenever I see that. This is, that was the third time I've seen it. And it's a war movie to me. Like, I, I, I like that stuff. I think a lot of it's technically there, but I, I feel like a lot of it was also kind of rushed, and I do feel that it, it was a little bit like, we gotta make sure he's in the Avengers. Maybe at the end, but, yeah. Whatever. Disagree. Whatever. I want you to change your opinions. Not at all. I just I just like Steve Rogers in this. I like this sort of 1940s aesthetic. I like watching him go through boot camp and all the stuff with Tommy Lee Jones and Stanley Tucci. And yeah, the, no, that's and all... And his love interest makes more sense, you know, and... No, that stuff's all great. All the I war just... stuff and all the strategy stuff, all the, you know, different things, and then all the villain stuff with, you know, the Red Skull and Toby Jones. Like, I like pretty much everything they put into this. I like the first hour a lot more than I do the last. All right, guys, The Avengers. You can't really make fun of this movie too much. Let's face it, everyone knows it's practically perfect. There's probably only gonna be like nitpicky stuff in here. You never know. From Joss Whedon, God of the Nerds, comes the movie blockbuster that finally unites the world's greatest superheroes that Marvel still has the rights to. The Avengers, the ultimate two-hour geek fantasy that blinds all nerds from admitting any legitimate criticism and put all of DC Comics on suicide watch. A villain who inexplicably returns from the dead will vow vengeance on the planet where his demigod brother's sort of girlfriend lives, forcing this Bluetooth-obsessed government agency to assemble the heroes from Marvel's greatest franchises, except Spider-Man, Fantastic Four, and X-Men. Suit up with Iron Man, everyone's favorite secondary Marvel character who must redeem himself from the god-awful Iron Man 2. Thor, who sort of pulled off his own movie, but whose appearance here completely negates its ending. Captain America, no one's favorite character, who just kinda has to be there. And the Incredible Hulk, who for the sake of the plot can now suddenly control his rage I'm always angry. without any explanation. That is Which true. doesn't matter, cause that shot was awesome. Witness the excitement. I need you to get to that engine control panel. Of Iron Man repairing a spaceship for 20 minutes. The thrill of generic aliens on flying jet skis. The confusing energy source of the Tesseract. The Tesseract can't fight. You can't protect against yourself. And it's completely unjustified failsafe. The explosion that instantly kills every alien, conveniently tying up all loose ends. The romance. And the character in the middle of the credits, who every nerd in the audience pretended to know. A movie so fulfilling, you won't remember that the first 25 minutes are actually kind of boring. 
Nah, that's not true. A villain so determined. You need the cube to bring me home, but I've sent it off I know not where. You'll wonder why he's uniting the only people who can stop him in hopes of getting them to dislike each other. Not a great plan. Battle is so action-packed. It's dark. You've got a lot of spray stick in your tail. You won't even ask yourself, how are they even all talking to each other without earpieces? I can close it. Can anybody copy? Do it! No, wait. Stock, these things are still coming. Stark, Boar, Pink Eye, Iron Man Poopy, not Edward Norton, the Human Torch, Leather Boobs, Mace Windu, and Gay Bane, Marvel's The Avengers. If this doesn't make your inner eight-year-old self squeal in delight, you're likely dead inside. Or a girl. If you like honest trailers, then please check out our brand new weekly series. It's not my favorite of theirs. No, it's definitely not um, because you really can't find much wrong with The Avengers and there's not much to make fun of because it's fucking awesome. Yeah, it really, it really pulled things together despite huge pressure and expectations. Yeah. The only thing I sort of like walked away from that with like, you know what, I, that is a question that I had. I feel like I found the answer through thinking about it was how was Banner able to suddenly control the Hulk? But I remember in The Incredible Hulk that if something triggered his anger prior to him not trying to channel it intentionally, he couldn't control the Hulk. But like at the end of The Incredible Hulk, he's able to channel it and then be able to control the Hulk because he's like, I don't know, preparing the mentality or some shit of the monster in him. And then same thing with the Avengers, like he gets triggered and then it's like he's trying to fight against it. But when he embraces it is when he can actually uh, control it. It's like one anger is in control and he channels, but there's another form of anger that causes him to be out of control. It seems like a, at least a worthy explanation or one worth discussing. You've obviously thought about it a lot more than I have. It worked for me in the movie partly because it's like when we meet him, it's established that he's spent so much time away and you can tell that like it's probably got a lot to do with him working on that. Yeah. You know, and so. Yeah, because at the end of The Incredible Hulk, it ends with Edward Norton, like he's on a run and then he goes into his little cabin and then you see him meditating and channeling the Hulk. Hmm. Like he's intentionally trying to get there through meditation. He does work on being able to control it. Yep, movie's perfect, can't really say anything. Anyway guys, thanks oh, for tuning in for phase one of Honest Trailers. You can catch our Iron Man movie spoiler talk and the Incredible Hulk spoiler talk on this channel as well. If you're new to the channel, you, you, you and you can subscribe to the real rejects and you can check out jerry's playlist reasons to jerry mm -hmm. where he does movie reviews and you can follow us on facebook instagram and twitter trying to get product placement from disney i would really like product placement a that lot would be cool i i want toys mainly is what i want if i could just get a lot of toys i'm talking star wars uh marvel make some black widow toys No. Disney. No. Do it. No. Do it. Kenneth Carrasco. Oh, wow. Hey, Ryan, I love your videos and have inspired me to soon start a reaction channel myself. What is up with all these people starting reaction too channels? Too inspiring. Uh, I know, I'm too, too inspiring. inspiring. You guys are awesome. Whoever is your guest is awesome, cool, and beautiful. All the girls on the channel are incredibly beautiful. Can I get a super badass shout out? Um, yeah, I could do that for you. Bust a beat. <laughs> Kenneth Carrasco, for you, our gahomo. I want to go on your dick and blow blow. My girlfriend's in the other room right now. She wants to get out of the room right now. Been filming for two hours, looking at honest trailers. I'm going in here, looking at Kenneth, where did Iron Mask? But tasked with this task, want to do this stuff, gotta go by fast and it won't last. But Kenneth is here, he has no fear. Yeah, I go around here and I still make jokes that make me sound like a queer. But is that offensive what I just said? Well, man, I'm saying I want to give Kenneth a good head. But he might be a little kid. So if you are Kenneth, then I, I didn't mean any of this. I'm gonna go take a piss. We should review their profiles before we... Uh rap about them in sexual manners.